Hallo, mein sehr guter Freund, und hier ist immer noch sein sehr gut Freund Sam. And that's right, that incredibly milky, oh, that was, that was the wrong word, that, that, um, let's not say milky, let's say that warm, invigorating German accent you just heard does in fact mean that uh, I am still here in beautiful Berlin. In fact, today in Berlin, it's really, really gorgeous. Um, I'm chilling here in auf, auf Wrangelstrasse uh, in my friend Stefan's house, looking out over the, um, out over the moors of uh, the moors of Grillitzer Park um, drinking a, a pilsner and chilling with but honestly does life get any better than this um, chilling playing with Max drinking a pills here on Wrangelstrasse it is pretty much um, am bestem so but anyway this is enough about me and this little corner of paradise let's talk instead about Max so what I want to do today is talk about live and Max sends some MIDI from live to Max and then use that MIDI to make some cool glitchy visual stuff. So what do you say? Let's begin. Um, start by opening up Max. Sorry, this pills is fighting its way back out. It's making very unpleasant noises that hopefully uh, you can't hear at all. So making a new window here and we're making some visuals. So let's set up some boilerplate shenanigans. Um, start with a toggle. I push T to make that toggle. You should know that by now. A Q metro, give it the argument 33. 33 is... God, sorry, this pill's really fighting. Um, 1000 divided by 33 is about 60, which is how we're getting to about 60 frames per second. That's why I'm giving this Q metro an argument of 33. And also make a jit.window, give it the name Billy, which I think is a a good name, a nice name. Throw it over there. Also a jit.p window so we can see what's being sent to this jit window without having to bring it to the foreground. And then finally, let's throw in some other stuff and throw in a key. Key reports key presses by sending an integer out here that is the ASCII code of the key pressed. I'm gonna make a cell 27 because I happen to know that the escape key happens to be ASCII code 27. So this will send it a bang every time I press the escape key. If I hook that up to a toggle, it means that when I push escape, this toggle toggles between on and off. And if I throw down here a full screen dollar sign one, this makes it so that whenever I send uh, a one to this, it will make this window go full screen. And if I push escape again, it goes away from being full screen. Very exciting stuff. Uh, not actually very exciting, but very useful stuff, shall we say. So this concludes the boilerplate boring portion of the program. And I'm going to save this as, oh, I don't know. Let's save it to the desktop in a new folder called tut27. And let's call this uh, this one. That took... <laughs> Uh, really, it clearly mattered a great deal what we called this patch. Um, cool, so we've got that part down. Um, let's do something else exciting. So I want to make some, when I said I want to do some visuals, let's start with something simple, let's start with some noise. So let's make a jit.noise, give it the arguments for char 88. Eight. Now what this is going to do is make a 4x4 four four array of noise, or rather 8x8. Eight eight. So we'll throw this into our, um, oh you know what, let's do, let's do a jit.op at a pass, or rather a jit.pass. Now what this is going to do is actually do nothing, but what I'm going to do is hook this jit.pass up to this um, uh, P window and to the window here. And this is just a convenience thing. So now I can hook up any matrix that I hook up to this input of this jit.pass is going to go both to this P window and to this window, which is a little bit convenient. Um, so just for convenience. Anyway, here's my eight by eight array of matrix of an array of matrix. Oh my God, a matrix of noise coming out of this jit.noise, um, which is cool, but I don't want to change the noise. Um, 60 times a second. I only want to change the noise when I send a bang. So what are we to do? Well, basically, um, we're going to use a matrix to hold the noise um, and then only generate new noise when we want to. So to do that, we make a jit.matrix. Matrix is just, think of it as like a buffer for uh, matrix data. I'm gonna give the arguments for char 320, 240, because I want to scale the matrix up from being actually eight by eight to being 320 by 240 pixels. The noise is still eight by eight, but the matrix that's gonna display it is gonna be 320 by 240 pixels. Um, give it the arguments at interp zero and at through zero. So 
Let's talk first about that at interp uh, attribute. What that's doing is just making it so that we don't interpolate. Um, oh, we need a bang here too. So this bang causes this jit.noise to uh, generate new noise. So first that add interp parameter. If we set this add interp parameter to one, you can see that we get this kind of cloudy thing here instead of that nice blocky noise matrix we had before. And that's obviously because uh, it's interpolating. It's interpolating the noise matrix and generating this weird cloud. But we of course don't want a weird cloud. We want grainy, aggressive, post-industrial, depressive, technologically glitchy, uh, just saying adjectives now, noise that looks like this. This is what we want. So I'm turning it at interrupt to zero. Now, this at through zero is making it so that uh, this matrix doesn't automatically send out a matrix every time it gets one. I don't want it to generate, to send out a new matrix whenever I generate noise here. I only want it to send out a matrix when it gets a bang from this Q metro. That's what setting this at through to zero is doing. So, so far, so good. Let's switch over to the live portion of the program. So I'm gonna open up Ableton Live here. You don't have to have Max for Live to do this. Uh, you don't even have to have Live. Any program that will send MIDI from, uh, can send out MIDI can do this. I just happen to be using Live because I have it. Um, and so, yeah, just uh, don't feel like you're being left out if you, although what's, it's 2013, man, get live. Clearly, if you wanna be a cool, successful video DJ, whatever, you gotta get live. But um, enough of a sales pitch for Ableton. Let's just instead say that if, let's instead say that if you don't have it, it's okay. Although it's not and you're a failure. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is, and the fact that I barely know live at all is gonna become very obvious very fast. I'm gonna throw a, uh, this sounds sweet, backbeat room. That's what I want. I'm gonna get beats in the back room. Now it sounds gross. I'm gonna make a new MIDI track here. And again, my inability to do anything worthwhile in live is gonna become super obvious super fast. I don't know what this sounds like. Okay, let's play this. Oh, that's just really absurd. Let's, nope. What about this? Nah, it's kind of pathetic. What about this? Yeah, that's sufficient. All right, so anyway, this is not the exciting portion of this tutorial by any stretch of the imagination. So there's our little beat. Um, what's happening here, this MIDI track obviously is sending MIDI to this instrument here in live. It's generating audio and that audio goes into live's effects, chain, audio, DSP, graph, whatever. Um, so that's cool, but we also wanna send this MIDI out to Max at the same time. So to do that, I'm gonna take this MIDI track here. Uh, first, you have to come up to preferences and then click here on MIDI sync and make sure that 2max1 and 2max2 are on. And they may be off, I think mine were off by default. Be sure to turn these on. And then in this MIDI track, click on IO over here to bring up the I's and the O's. And then down here where it says MIDI2, make sure it says 2max1. So this MIDI track sends MIDI to an internal instrument in live that sends audio to live. This MIDI track is going to send all of its MIDI out externally across the MIDI bus or whatever, I don't know, uh, to max. So if I duplicate this track and push play over here, uh, it's a clip, not a track, sorry. You can see that we're sending audio not only to live, but also out. And if we go back to max and make a note in, uh, two max one, and throw a bang over here. Look at that, we are in fact getting audio from live. That's very exciting, but let's stop it. So we're getting that audio, that's pretty sweet. Oh, sorry, MIDI, and that's really great. Um, so now let's make it so that when we get that MIDI, we can do something with it. Uh, let's generate new noise every time we hear that tom. Uh, we happen to know this tom is G3, which is MIDI note 67. So what's coming out here is going to be pitch, and out here is gonna be velocity. We love note ons, but we hate note offs because note offs are stupid. So we're gonna make a strip note. Strip note strips off the note offs. So we throw pitch in here and velocity in here, obviously. And then, uh, so see, velocity is gonna come out here. Sorry, velocity comes out here, pitch comes out here. Let's pack those together, pack integer, integer. So they will now come out as a list of two things. I don't know why I decided this voice was appropriate. And then let's select, no, let's route, um, let's route um, MIDI notes 60 and 67. 
So 60 is going to be the kick and 67 is the tom. I said I wanted to generate new noise when we hear that tom. So let's make a bang, hook that up to our noise, and then um, play the track in, uh, play the, what is this called, this whole thing, a scene. Play the scene in live. Cool. Pretty cool, right? I mean, that's kind of cool. We're generating new noise every time we hear that tom uh, from live. So let's oops, uh, stop this scene and let's get even crazier. So that's great, um, but let's say we wanted some kind of um, envelope, right? Here we're just taking a bang and using that to generate uh, new noise, but maybe we want some kind of effect that has a continuous um, envelope to it uh, in Max. So we've already seen in a previous tutorial one good way to do that, which is with the function object. Function stores a curve, and what's nice about it is that curve will actually save with the patch. So I'm gonna make a quick and dirty curve like so. Uh, something like this, I don't know. And then I'll make another bang here. And every time this function gets a bang, it's going to send a specially formatted message out of this outlet that is perfect for going to a line tilde object. So if we connect a line tilde to this output and then very importantly, make an easy DAC, and eh, it doesn't actually matter, but easy DAC so we can turn audio on and off. Make sure audio is turned on. It is now on, very exciting. Um, and now send a bang, let's see, make a scope object. And you can see now that when I click on this bang, this audio ramps up and then ramps down. That's very good. But I don't necessarily want to, uh, audio, I don't want audio here. I want something that I can send to matrices over here to control them. So we want to take a snapshot of this audio signal. And of course the right thing for that is the snapshot tilde object. Snapshot tilde takes an audio input, and every time you send it a bang, it takes a snapshot of that audio input and sends it out here as a uh, control message, or just as a number, really. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is take this chord here. I'm gonna want a new, um, uh, I'm gonna want a new, what am I even trying to say? I'm gonna want to get, a, to pull a value from here once per frame. So I'm gonna make a trigger here, bang, bang. And this second bang is just going to uh, actually send my matrix through to be processed. This first bang here, I'm gonna make a send and uh, call my send read params. You, obviously you can call this anything you want, but basically I'm breaking down the generation of every um, video frame into two stages. The first stage is gonna be reading all my parameters and the second stage is gonna be actually sending my matrix through for processing. So over here, we'll make a receive read params and send this through to um, snapshot like so. And now uh, we should be getting a new number with every single frame. Uh, let's hook this up to something. So let's make a jit.brcosa. This is a brightness contrast saturation object. And I'm gonna make it so that the saturation depends on this value. Saturation dollar sign one. And send this over to the Mercosa. So now if we play our scene, you can see that that kick like pushes this, pushes color into our matrix and then it fades out slowly. And if we play with this function curve here, we can make it pop in more abruptly, pop out more abruptly. That's cool, I want it a little bit smoother. Maybe like so. Yeah, I like that. Uh, what's one more cool thing we can do? So that's it, we're basically done. I'm gonna save this as viz2. Um, let's go ahead and make an adder UI, and I'm gonna turn up the contrast a little bit to a crazy value like 10. Yeah, I like that. Uh, maybe five. Yeah, and then uh, one more cool thing. Let's throw a jit.scan slide. No, it's called scan wrap in here. Scan wrap is just a cool, ob cool object that does this little like wrapping scan lines effect that I really like. And I'm gonna give it the arguments for char 320, 240. I don't know that you actually have to do that, but I just did. 
Um, and then I want to generate new scan lines every time we generate new noise. So we'll make a random. You're going to wonder where these numbers are coming from. Don't worry about it. Just, <laughs> just accept it. Uh, 320 and 8. And send this bang to each of these randoms. Um, pack integer integer. Add our UI. Connect it to this jit.scanwrap, dim, and then connect this up to dim. Yeah, so this is now picking new crazy scan wrap dimensions um, every time we get a bang, which is pretty cool. Um, and this is our final audio effect with what's coming in from live. I'm gonna take a sip of my delicious pills now, having finished this tutorial. confession I took much much more than a sip so there you go that's um sending MIDI from live um, back into Max and using that uh, using that um, <laughs> MIDI sorry I don't know why I couldn't think of that word using that MIDI to generate uh, some simple audio effects uh, from noise and controlling them with um, with Max so hopefully that was an enjoyable and illuminating tutorial uh, thank you very much for your attention as always and I will hopefully be seeing you guys again very soon and once again if you're in Berlin and you want to um, hang out or talk Max or get a delicious Pilsner or whatever uh, hit me up I'd be more than happy to share the time so in any case thanks again guys and uh, I'll see you soon ciao